changes occurs when excuses pivot to execution that's right i'm going to talk about pivot table in this video it's an amazing feature of excel and you will be using a lot this is by far the easiest the most powerful feature of excel you will really enjoy understanding this feature if you are already using it that's amazing i'm going to give you very basic insights of pivot table if you have never heard about it never used it this is a video for you see if you are a freelancer if you want to build your career in excel and you want to pick up projects on excel this feature is really very important and if you are doing a job you will be saving tons and tons of time if you use this feature because it will an analyze your data in seconds so that's why i'm stressing stressing a lot for you to understand this feature very much important very easy to understand very easy to use everything is in build you need to you need not to do anything by yourself that's the power of this feature right okay let me take you to the excel sheet and i'll show you how to do it okay so over here we have some data with us if you see the data is all about bank's data right so this is all about bank data and this is the bank deposits data i'm taking the sample data to create a pivot table for you i'll explain what a pivot is uh, but this is a bank's data right and it's all about over 700 rows of data we have and this is the data for the month of september so the purpose is suppose this bank you know engaged us to analyze its data and this is for different branches right we we need to analyze it, this data and we need to present it to our client which this bank is that's the purpose now what a pivot table but before we get into pivot table let's talk about the word the meaning of the word pivot pivot means is is just like you know uh, example could be of a door right if you see i have a door over here and right now it's a flat surface right if you see it's a flat surface if i just open it up you'll notice if i tilt it up you'll notice one thing that's a it's a straight line in front of you right and if i just completely open it up you'll notice that it's a flat surface so i'll simply move it over here and you'll notice again it's a it's a uh, it's a plane it's a single line in front of you so this is actually this motion which is this this closing and opening of this door this motion is known as a pivot right or if you see this watch so in this watch this needle is an example of a, a pivot where this needle is actually moving so what is common in this this watch example or this door example is that object is fixed from its center point and then it is moving around that motion is known at known as pivot so the object will remain same but we get a different angle of looking looking at it that's what we we call a pivot right and that's why this excel guys are using this word as pivot now the data will remain same but we change we mold the data in such a way that we get a different angle of looking at it right and that and when we when we uh, process that data into a form of a table that pivoted data that what we call a pivot table if we, if we put it into a chart that becomes pivot chart right that's that's the difference right okay so let's talk about it now over here uh, we have this data and we need to analyze it let's take an example the very first question could be we have the date we have the amount account type opened by branch and customer the simple question over here is that how much deposit we have received in each branch let me just apply a filter i'm using control shift l by the way the shortcut and let me see how many branches we have we have three branches so how much deposit we have received in each branch that is what we need to know now this can be done with any other feature of excel you can either sort it you can either filter it and then do a sum or you can use a sum if function right so but any any way you go with it will take lot of time lot of efforts and because lot of manual intervention is involved it will be uh, there could be chances of having mistakes right but through pivot table that's a feature which actually do everything by its own you need not to do any you need not to perform anything it's just that you need to just drag and drop the fields in an appropriate manner that is what you need to understand and rest everything will be taken care by this amazing feature of excel chalo let's start now 
Okay, first of all, we need to first select the data. So I'm going to select the data. I'm going to select the complete data. I've used the shortcut control shift down arrow, control shift right arrow. I've selected the complete data, right? Now at the top, we have the insert tab. Under the insert tab, we have this pivot table. So I'm going to click on pivot table. And there we go. We have this box in front of us and is asking that where you want to place the pivot table. Do you want to put it in a new worksheet? or you want to put it in an existing worksheet. I would say I want it in a new worksheet. So I'll just simply click OK and it'll create another worksheet and I'll be having the skeleton of the pivot table. Let me just move this. Uh, let me move my face over here so that we can see the fields over here also. OK, on the left hand side, as you can see, we have the skeleton on the right hand side. We have a pane in which we have all the fields available. What, what are these, by the way? These are the headers of that table, right? These are the fields which are really, very important to fetch the data. OK, now we discuss about the word pivot. What is table? Table is something any data table has three things in common. We have the columns. We have the rows and the values in between. So three things common. Now over here also we have columns, we have rows and we have values. You remember the question guys I've told you we need to figure out that how much deposit we have received in each branch. I know this can be done with any other feature of Excel but that's going to take a lot of time and a lot of manual intervention is required. But in this case there is nothing we need to do is just that we have to drag and drop the fields over here. Now if you Think about the question. If you need to solve any question through a pivot table, always think about the fields which are required to solve that question. What all fields are required? We need branch. We need amount, right? So I'm going to pick up the branch over here. You can see I have a branch. So I'll just pick it up. Either I can drop it into column or I can drop it into row. Now, the moment I drop it over here, you'll notice I'll be having all the branches with me. So if, if a branch is coming 50 times in the data, it will come here only once unique values. OK, so you have to be very careful also because if you are getting a data from someone who have manually put in the data, then there could be chances of having mistake or having duplicate data. For example, if I give you a form and if, if you belongs to Delhi, people like you or me who belongs to Delhi, they may write Delhi in 10 different ways. Delhi, DL, ND, New Delhi like that. OK. If I, if I capture that data and I try to create a pivot from that data, I'll be having multiple values of Delhi, right? And it will mess up the complete values because I need the total. It won't be give us, won't be able to give us the total, right? That's why the data should be clean enough before you proceed to create a pivot table. Now over here, I have, I have it. I have all the branches. Now I need amount, right? So I'm going to pick up the amount and amount will always go inside values. It means any field that has numbers should always be dropped inside values because on that we need to perform the calculation. Anytime we talk about calculation, we should drop it into values. That's simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so dropped it and there we go. We got the branch. We got the amount. So that's it. That's it. It's, it's that easy. Branch and amount. The total amount we got received in each branch. This is that simple. It's just drag and drop and we got the value. Right. No need to put in the filter. No need to put in the sort. No need to put in the sum f function. Right. And in fact, right now we have three branches. If we have 30 branches, 100 branches, 500 branches, we could get all those totals just like this. Right. It's all about drag and drop till the time your data is correct. The base data is correct till that moment. Our pivot data will also be correct. Right. We'll be getting the correct values. It's just like that. If you don't want to put it into the row, row label, the branch, I can actually drop it into the column label. That's it. It's just like this. So the values, the result will remain same and will be correct. Also, it's all about the layout. The layout is different now. Right. So I'll just pick it up and drop it over here into the rows. I'll be getting the different layout, but the values are correct. Okay, now let me just take it further. Let me just take the question further. I would say I want to show you the data once and I would say, okay, you, you should also notice one thing. The moment you click outside the pivot, you can see that field list. We call it field list it goes away it's by default. You have to be inside the pivot. Then only you can see this by any chance. If you, if you just cross it, so don't worry about it. That got turned off. You need to turn it on. How simply right click inside the pivot anywhere and simply click on show field list. And there we go. We got that field list once again. That's easy, right? Okay, let me take you to the data and let me show you what I really need now is branch wise. 
I'll just move it over. Branch wise and account type wise deposits. I need branch wise and account type wise deposits. So I would see, I want to see that how many account types are there. There are four account types, right? So I'll just go over there. Now, because we are using pivot table, it's quite easy. Otherwise, if you do sorting, filtering or some ifs, you need to use some ifs by the way. So that will be quite lengthier to do it. But in this case, what do we need to do? It's quite simple. It's just we'll pick up the account type and I'll simply either we can drop it into columns, right? Or we can drop it into rows. If I drop it into columns, that way we got a grid and we are done. That's it. It's all about just drag and drop and we got the value. If you want to put it into row, I'll just drop it over here. Only the layout will change. The values will remain same. And that's a very good view we are getting, right? It's just a grouped view we are getting. And in this case also, I've got a lot of questions from the corporate clients. When I go over there and provide training to them, they also ask me one very common question is that they want to have it in two different columns. No worries. We have the options. I've told you already that in Pivot, all the options are already there. You need not to do anything manually, right? So you just need to know where that option is. So I'll just go to the design tab. Inside the design tab, we have the report layout and there we have show in tabular form. I'll click on this and that's it. It went into two different columns. Now, if you want to fill these blank cells also, we have an option. I'll again go to the report layout and then we have an option of repeat all item labels. Now, uh, be very careful. This particular function report uh, repeat all item labels is not there in Excel 2007. So if you are using 7, you won't be having this. Rest of the features will be there. So I'll click on this and there we go. We got all the values. Now, if you want to actually remove the subtotals, so I'll go to the subtotals and I'll say do not show subtotals. That way, we got that grid. Otherwise, I'll simply undo it. I'm using Control Z, Control Z to get all the values back, right? This way you can create a pivot and that's it. This is very simple feature guys, but very useful. We are not doing manually anything. We are getting all the values. Now, one more thing I would like to show you is that for example, now I want to see the data. This data should belong to only one type of customer, which is only for the new customers. Because we haven't used the customer field so far, it means it is giving us the data for all the type of customers. So I'll be picking up the customer now and I'll simply drop it into the filter because I need something out of the customer field. So I'll drop it over here and there we go. I'll click on the drop down. I'll new, you'll notice one thing that I'll go to new. Okay. And now it'll start showing us the data only for the new customers, right? This is how we can actually filter the data. Now, one more thing, the data shows us the total by default, the sum of the amounts. What if, if I want to know the count of new customers who joined us in the month of September under each branch, under each account type. I just simply need to change the sum to count. How to do it? Simply right click and then you can see over here, summarize values by count. There we go. I'll click on count and I've got those values. So in total, there are 245 customers. Can you see how quickly I'm doing it? This is that easy. That's why I'm telling you, this is the most useful and most easiest feature of Excel. You can analyze the data like anything over here using this feature. And in fact, Excel has introduced a power pivot also that is a part of the power tools of Excel, right? That's why I'm telling you, Excel is something the charm won't fade away at all. It's been decades people are using Excel and still the graph is just like this, right? That's why if you want to build a career in Excel, it's a very nice option. You should go for it and I'm helping you in any way, right? So this way you can do it. And now if you want to add a few more things, I'll go to analyze tab. I can click on slicer and I can add a slicer. For example, what we don't have over here is, uh, let me just add something. Uh, amount date, date is fine. We can also add a date over here. But for that, it's better to use a timeline. That will be much easier to use. I'll go to timeline I'm using a date I want to sh I'm just showing in you an uh, extra option over here for example I want to know the data for okay so this is I'll just go with the days rather than because we are already having the September Monday I want to see the data only for the 17th September so this is what the data is so this way you can actually do it and also what you can do I want to add one more very interesting feature of pivot is pivot chart which I've told you earlier so I'm going to use this I'll just place it over here. I'll just move my face here, face cam here. Okay, so this is how it looks like, right? I can simply, so it's completely dynamic. Can you see? 
it's absolutely dynamic. So this is a kind of a quick dashboard we created using pivot table. Now, so this is how we do it. And just one more thing I would like to show you. Uh, electricity is gone. I'm sorry for that. Uh, okay. So what I want to show you is that this is how we created it. And one more thing, as I mentioned earlier, now this is the basic part of the pivot. What you can do, you can actually learn the advanced part of it. And I've captured all of that into my whole in-depth course over here. As I mentioned earlier, I believe. So if you go down to that module, I want to show you the module related to my pivot table. Can you see the pivot table and its techniques over here? Look at that. It's a beautiful module that I've created and you can see all the videos are very lengthy. As you can see, this video is also lengthy because it takes time to make you understand or define pivot, right? So understanding pivot, this is what we are doing already. Now another exercise related to the pivot in the real scenario, there is a different data set I've used. Now how to use the grouping option. That's very interesting. You can group based on quarters, years, you know, uh, months, weeks, all those you can do. And using the slicer, that was a slicer we just used. We, we didn't use the slicer, that was a timeline, but you can use the slicer that has been captured over here. And over here, I've also explained how we can create a dashboard using pivot table. So that is all covered into this in-depth course. You should check out, would be useful for you. I believe you've got a very good idea about how to use a pivot table, right? So uh, do not forget to watch the next video. I'm going to talk about that, how we can move forward. Thank you so much.